In um, naming the new well Rechovot, Yitzchak makes two statements. One, Ata Hirchiv Hashem Lanu, and two, Uparinu Ba'aretz. The two statements are clearly linked in that now that God has given us room to expand, Yitzchak felt he was in a position to Uparinu Ba'aretz. What requires clarification is who is the we referred to by Yitzchak in Parinu? And secondly, what did he actually mean with the statement of being fruitful in the land. One option is to link the word uparinu with the command to Peru Uruvu. The command blessing of Peru Uruvu is first mentioned in Bereshit Perek Aleph, once on day five of creation and a second time on day six. In the first, Pasuk Chof Bet, it forms part of a blessing that God gave the animals that they should be fruitful and multiply. Following the creation of man on day six, God blesses them and says, Peru, Ravu, be fruitful and multiply, Miluet Haaretz, and fill up, populate the land. There appears to be a universal acceptance of the linkage between Uparinu and Peru, Ravu, as we see in the major translations, and we can, we will be fruitful in the land. This uh, linkage will be rejected from the standpoint of Pshuto Shel Mikra. There appears to be a universally accepted translation for the statement of Peru Ravu as be fruitful and multiply. The fact that both terms appear to be synonymous and hence from the standpoint of Pshuto Shel Mikra only one of these expressions should have been used by HaKadosh Baruch Hu in his blessing to mankind, either Peru or Revu, but not both. While one could argue that this is the Chumash style in presenting information, Rashi, the Pshuta Shel Mikra individual, takes a different position in attempting to justify such anomalies. Rashi offers a commentary to the first Peru or Revu, and I guess by extension it would also apply to the second. Firstly, Rashi links the word Peru with the word Peri, a fruit, which when applied to the human being, it would suggest a blessing that the human being will have the ability to procreate. As mentioned, Revu has basically the same connotation, and therefore from the standpoint of the Pshuta Shel Mikra is superfluous, to which Rashi responds by suggesting that the Urevu expands upon the Peru'u. In Rashi's own words, Imlo Amar Ela Peru, had the command only been Peru, then Haya Echad Molet Echad. God's blessing would be limited to the birth of a single offspring from a set of parents. Clearly, not a sustainable option. Uba Uruvu, God added the word Uruvu to the Peru that allowed for She'echad Molid Harber, that there would could be multiple births throughout the lifespan of the parents. What we draw from Rashi's commentary is that the word Peru, Peresh He, in of itself, implies the creation of offspring, but not necessarily a multiplicity of births. Stated differently, Peresh He merely removes the state of Ayin Kuf Resh, childlessness, but does not necessarily imply the birth of many children. This is reflected in the word Uravu which, for lack of a better word, to multiply. We will now attempt to relate this information to Yitzchak's statement of Uparinu Ba'aretz. We will need to reject the link between Uparinu and Peru for the following reason. Rashi has established that the term Peru in of itself does not necessarily connote multiple births. In fact, if one were to adopt a minimalist reading of the word Peru, it merely suggests the absence of childlessness, for which the birth of a single child meets the test of Peru. If we transfer that information over to Parshat Toldot, in which Yitzchak states, Ki ata hirchiv Hashem lanu, the successful digging of the well, which he named Rechovot, indicated to him that God had Hirchiv, a word that connotes broadening, expansiveness, and on account of this Hirchiv, Yitzchak states, Uparinu Ba'aretz, 
the two terms are out of synchronization. Parino connected to Peru or Revu is minimalistic and runs counter to the concept of Hirchiv Hashem. This is the textual difficulty that Rashi feels he needs to address according to the Pshuta Shel Mikra approach.